Hello friends, nice to see you again. Uh, just today I read uh, a nice topic in Facebook group. Uh, Peter Lim has published like a question and he said, what do you guys think about uh, the Dragon Cry's lyrics? And uh, I actually thought about it a lot. So I thought that maybe I should just try to do some analysis. Um, I will do it actually uh, in the light of scriptures, so to say, because um, I'm a religious person, I'm uh, Baha'i, that is called Baha'i faith. So if you are a dogmatic materialist, then uh, you may probably wish to stop here and don't listen to my banter at all. Uh, but uh, my idea is that uh, you know, we all human beings here on this earth are all in the search of meaning. And uh, there is a wonderful uh, saying in Persian, actually. Uh, there's a, a Persian, like what we call it, saying, yeah. Uh, Under the throne of God, there are great treasures. And the keys to this treasure is the town of poets. So what I believe uh, Miko as a poet of bandmate, as a lyricist of bandmate, she's really a great poet. That's my firm belief. Like when, well, she always had a lot to say, actually a lot to add to the lyrics. It's not clear entirely like at which um, moment she started really to contribute to the lyrics. Uh, we know that uh, after a certain moment it was all hers and she commented a lot about that, how, like, how difficult it is to write the lyrics. Uh, of course, yeah. But uh, even the, the first songs which they did, like Thrill for instance, uh, Thrill contains at least one verse which is entirely hers and she commented on that. Uh, remember where she sings, uh, they sing in turn with uh, Psyche. That was their like signature thing uh, initially in the first albums uh, in uh, Made in Japan and um, New Beginning. So they used it a lot. And she was singing, so Miko was singing one verse and it was about this uh, little pigeon making arc in the sky. And it was very, that, that was about her. So she just inserted there into Thrill. And that was really great, a very touching, a very touching story. Like very touching image, I should say, like little pigeon making arc in the sky. That was her aspiration. So I believe that uh, she always had a lot to say. Uh, in, in all their songs. So, the, the Dragon Christ. We know that the lyrics for this song were written by the guy uh, who is an English uh, language guy and called uh, Thomas Kennedy. So, Mr. Thomas Kennedy, um, I don't know who is he. Like, if you, if you just try to uh, look who he is on genius.com, uh, then we'll see that uh, he composed two songs, basically. Quattro Sabatina, Dario Marianelli, where it is. Uh, yeah, two songs, and the third one is a uh, bandmate song. So, okay, probably not very prolific writer. Uh, Actually, yeah, two songs, two songs, Quattro Sabatini and The Dragon Christ by Ben Maid. That's all what he did. Uh, at least that's what uh, Genius.com knows about him. And uh, people were speculating, like, um, was it given to uh, Psyche and to Miko when they came to New York studio uh, to collaborate with Tony Visconti or how was it done. Uh, my impression from these lyrics is that 
I see Miku's hand here, like Miku's mind. That's her mind uh, production, obviously. And that's what I see. And she probably just explained it to Mr. Kennedy, like how she wants to, what she wants to say. And he basically formulated it in English. That's my impression. Okay. Okay, let's start. As I said, I will interpret it in religious terms, but um, mainly in terms of like meaning, yeah, meaning of the song, which I'm, I'm really, I'm very much impressed with it. People said that it's like very simple lyrics. Okay, they they not that complicated. They not, uh, yeah, because that was obviously commissioned from this guy. And I think it, it's a perfect, perfect thing for them. It's very simple lyrics in terms of like words chosen. They're not difficult at all. And maybe they even like polished them afterwards for the ease of pronunciation and everything. Uh, but the meaning is still there. So Miku, Miku is like that actually. She likes very clear cut, uh, lucid images, you know, just without much uh, unnecessary Balihu, you know, she just she's very straightforward, and Psyche loves it. I think Psyche is like she's she doesn't like all this pretension and stuff. So honesty is really Psyche's second name. So I think Psyche supports Miku in this uh, attitude as well. So okay, let's uh, listen to this wonderful song and um, see what what it means. Okay, let's stop here. <clears throat> okay, so the first verse. Uh, something happened long ago. The world was simple, a love could grow, bound together in dark and light, at peace within, no need to fight. That clearly reminds me of the story of uh, Adam and Eve, yeah, this fall from grace in uh, the Garden of Eden. Like, uh, that's basically what Thomas Kennedy put it into this form. It's obviously about that, yeah. So they, like, there was a time uh, when humanity lived in some blissful state. Um, there was peace among humans and there was no need to fight, uh, bound together in dark and light. So it means no matter what difficulties the people were going through, they were still united. Uh, the world was simple, a love could grow. Okay, it was simple, yeah, like uh, what they say, the primordial unity, the primordial uh, purity, let's say, yeah? when like the child is pure, not because child is, uh, it's not child's, um, the child did not do it to himself or herself. Uh, the child is pure just because it's ignorant, right? So then a human being goes through all the trials and tests and becomes resistant to these trials and tests, learns from them, uh, spiritual develops, and then this human being becomes uh, pure and because it just overcame so many things in life, yeah, becomes wise, uh, no matter what happens to this person, uh, then 
okay, I know this, I've been through it, I've been through thick and thin. Uh, okay, so here they say the world was simple, a love could grow. Yeah, it's, it's very great that uh, there was this primordial bliss, yeah, and then we, there, humanity fell from grace, something happened long ago, they say. Um, that's what it talks about. And then Psyche continues. Sorry, I have to switch from screen to screen. Um, okay, so that is why, why too many tears flow. And that is why, why with each goodbye the dragon cries. People are like asking, who is this dragon? Uh, you know the dragons, they, it's a, they have radically different image in the Western culture and in the Asian culture, in the Far Eastern culture. In Far Eastern culture, dragon is like a very complex uh, image. It's It can be evil, it can be good, but quite often dragon there is uh, a symbol of of God, I would say. Uh, for the Western people, yeah, for Christian, for people of Christian background, for people of Muslim background, uh, it's, yeah, we could very easily equated with God. So dragon is like a higher power, a symbol of higher power, of a prophet, of uh, a teacher, yeah, of uh, like Buddha, you know, whoever, whoever it is, the, the teacher of humankind, like some, not the teacher actually, because dragon is like a more like personification of this uh, impersonal God, you know, like some power so dragon well there are there are different examples but my impression about dragon is in uh, like japanese or chinese culture is that it's like it's that god you know like the the, the universal mind or whatever you call it uh, which just uh, oversees humanity but uh, yeah, it interferes. It interferes with human affairs, but um, in reality, like, just like observer, like outside observer or something. But here you see that with each goodbye, the dragon cries. So uh, there is this uh, concept in Baha'i faith. By the way, today is uh, that day in Baha'i faith, a holy day called the Day of the Covenant. So this comment actually uh, that fits this day perfectly because today is the day of the covenant. So what is the covenant? A covenant is an agreement, right, between uh, God and uh, humanity. So uh, what are the roles of uh, parties in this covenant and this agreement? Uh, God sets the rules. So God has created the universe, uh, he created uh, human beings and told human beings uh, how to behave. Also God has created a lot of other beings which just follow God's will blindly like animals for instance or even like uh, plants and uh, stones, whatever. Uh, they cannot disagree with God. They just do what God says. That's why, like, that's why cats and dogs are so beautiful yeah, and all the animals. Because you see that like God shines through them, they don't have their free will, they just uh, follow what God says. And that's why they're beautiful. Uh, humans uh, can be beautiful or not beautiful, depending on whether humans follow God's uh, commandment or they rebel against God's commandment. So if people rebel, they become like, they say, like rotten inside, or like this, like we say, a dark person, like dark side of power and all that stuff. Uh, so 
yeah, the people can be bad. Uh, animals cannot be bad, you know, they're always beautiful. Even ugly animals, they're still beautiful in their own way. Uh, but humans can be ugly, they can really be ugly. Uh, if they choose to um, break the covenant. Uh, and that's what Miku says here through, let's say, a translator. Uh, so Thomas Kennedy is a translator here. I believe that's my conviction. So that is why he says, too many tears flow with each goodbye the dragon cries. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, that's what we do. Um, yeah, if we... Um, it's obviously about love. A song is about love. Like, let's say the girl loved a boy. And then boy said goodbye. Like, yeah, I don't care about you anymore. Goodbye. And the girl was heartbroken. And... Uh, at this moment, God cries, because God intended humans to be happy. Uh, if you follow the covenant, uh, you will never betray. Yeah? If you make a promise, you follow the promise. Uh, you always trustworthy. That's like the main thing which God wants from us, to be truthful, to be trustworthy. Uh, okay, if you just say like, ah, goodbye, like, I don't care and you leave but you already made a promise so you've broken your your promise and that's when the god cries that's when dragon cries okay let's continue Okay, I'll stop here for a while. <clears throat> of course, I couldn't stop uh, during the uh, Mrs. Nakama solo. Okay, I'll rewind it a little bit. Uh, all right. So, yeah, the, the second verse is exactly about that, as, as I said. Then you left me no reason why. Then you left me no reason why. Okay, uh, yeah, people can leave one another if there is a reason like uh, like we don't have to be together okay do you agree yeah we should not be together like goodbye okay goodbye goodbye so mutual agreement uh, but uh, that's just some whimsical thing like no reason why and then all this image like no fallen rain my love went dry no falling rain, my love went dry. Uh, this image is, that, that's the reason actually why I think that uh, Thomas Kennedy was just a translator, because these images, they don't seem to me like images from English language. They look a bit awkward. No falling rain, my love went dry. My breath was empty, no tree to climb. It's a, a bit strange, here. like no tree to climb. To me, it's like, uh, options yeah like why do you climb a tree because just you want to play like ch children climb the trees yeah adults usually don't do it unless they want to have a vantage point uh, to see further right so it could relate uh, e either just 
to like uh, being just happy and wanting to play or no tree to climb means that uh, nowhere to go. Yeah, that's actually um, the lyrics continue in this vein later. Like uh, you see that um, yeah, when people behave bad, what do they do? They basically diminish their options. Uh, yeah, no trees to climb. And then, of course, very familiar images like no stars that shine a moonless sky. That's like a person is in complete darkness, in complete, uh, um, like, yeah, without, yeah, no light, darkness all around, uh, depression, basically, the girl's in depression, yeah, no stars that shine a moonless sky. And then the chorus uh, continues, that is why, why too many tears flow, that is why, with each goodbye, the dragon cries. That is why, yeah, because uh, when you break the covenant, when you basically betray a person, you betray God, and the dragon cries again. Um, I will comment actually on the on another verse here. The birds that sin, sin no more. The deer that the deer that run have no place to hide. Have no place to hide. Obviously, I think from like wolves or something. Uh, so deer, uh, I don't know what deers do in the forest. Uh, they don't have uh, shelters, probably, but I probably don't know. But it looks to me like the deer uh, would like to hide from, say, wolves, which chase it. And no place to hide, yeah. A thousand roses that never bloom. It's a very powerful image, like this, a thousand roses. So the roses are all there, but they never bloom. Uh, like mind blowing, you know. Just no more tears to cry, and even no more tears to cry. So the dragon cries, uh, but a human being uh, who is heartbroken even can cry no more because so in depression you don't cry. You just sit there, you know, like stone. Uh, not st stone means like you on drugs, yeah, but. Uh, no more tears to cry when you're completely exhausted. Yes, yeah? so all your nervous power is wasted already. Uh, there is very interesting uh, line here: the phoenix flies. The phoenix flies. Uh, that's why some people commented uh, that, uh, as usually, band may gives us a ray of hope in the midst of darkness. So, but it's only one line like this. So the phoenix lies. So yes, of course, you're heartbroken. Uh, the covenant is broken, and uh, you in depression. But then, of course, you will rise from these ashes again. Of course, you will, uh, with all the scars on your heart and on your soul. Uh, but yeah, what don't kill me makes me more strong, right? So yeah, the phoenix flies. Okay, and then it says that is why, why too many tears flow. That is why, why with each goodbye the dragon flies. The dragon flies. So they like phoenix flies. The dragon flies. Um, it could mean actually two things. The dragon flies, like the dragon flies away, uh, like God leaves you, like leaves you alone, uh, leaves humanity alone because. I was remember it was a very interesting phrase from Ozzy Osbourne actually, like people say like, I believe in God or like I don't believe in God, but Ozzy asks in the there's what what was this uh, song? Um, I forgot the name exactly. It's from the Sweet Leaf, um, from the um, probably Sweet Leaf, uh, where he says like. Would you tell me, Mr. Jesus, uh, would you tell me if you can, uh, when you see the world we live in, do you still believe in man? So it's not like, uh, do I believe in Jesus? Oh, no. <laughs> Ask yourself, does Jesus believe in you? That That's the key question, basically. So that's, uh, yeah, the dragon flies. The dragon flies because God does not believe in you anymore. Yeah, like... Uh, there's a wonderful saying um, in Baha'i Holy Writings from Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah is the founder of Baha'i Faith. And he says, um, 
uh, be not like those who has forsaken God and um, how does he put it uh, who has forgotten God and whom God made to forget themselves I think that's what Baha'u'llah says so it means that uh, if you forget that there is a meaning in life you just live your miserable life you know doing all terrible things to people around you because you just don't care or you like wander mindlessly in this life you know just hurting everybody breaking all your promises you know not thinking about things so that means you has forgotten god and then god makes you forget yourself uh it's very interesting that Baha'u'llah says that um, he never uses the word sinner there is no there is a concept of sin of course in all religions but Baha'u'llah uses the word um, um what's the english name uh, heedless ones or oh, heedless ones he says so yeah, if you think about most of the things, uh, sins, most of the sins which people do, they basically come from being mindless. They're just heedless. People are heedless. They don't care. They care, eh, whatever. Like, or they don't see far enough or something like that. Okay, guys, let's listen to the end of this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful song and finish here. song such a great song guys okay enough for now i'm again reaching half an hour it's crazy like that each time each time is like that like i want to say so much and then in there like ah so many things i haven't said i even have like paper with all the notes which i keep and there's like it's only one line from here <laughs> okay bye for now guys see you in the next video